Hi everybody, welcome to another Star Trek review. And this isn't a Diamond Select product, it isn't a QMX product, it's in fact a Playmates product, which I think were the second ever company to start making Star Trek products. First being Mego, and when I say products, I mean toys, and not as in like mugs or anything like that. And as you can see here, we have the phaser from 1992, which looks very, very cool. But what I'll do is I'll just put that down and I'll show you the package, as it is a really nice looking package. Anyway, here we have the packaging. It says Star Trek The Next Generation, Space The Final Frontier. I don't know why, but it just does. Phaser, official Starfleet defensive weapon. Playmates logo, stock number, what that means I don't know. Warning, realistic light up phaser beam, two authentic Star Trek phaser sounds, and a bonus technical blueprint included. Now then, two authentic Star Trek phaser sounds? I think we'll be the judge of that. Actual sounds from the Star Trek TV show, fair enough. Two replaceable AA batteries included. And here we have a different looking picture of the um, phaser as it's meant to be a red tip, not black, on the toy that is. Collector's edition. Look at this. They made over three million of them. So it kind of makes me think, well, doesn't make it seem as special now that they've kind of characterised it like that. But I still really like it and it has a nice... It's just a really nice toy, to be honest, because that's why it is a toy. And you've got, obviously, some kind of away planet in the background with, like, a split. What, what this kind of looks like is that black thing, that goopy goop thing from that episode where, spoiler alert, just so you know, I always forget to say this, but spoiler alert, if you haven't seen the episode of season one, when Lieutenant Tasha Yard dies. I don't know whether that was a reference to it, but oh well. And of course here it is blowing up a planet from the looks of it, considering where it's firing, as you've got something like Saturn there, and I don't know what that is, but moving on. On the top we've got the same stuff, just kind of put in a different way. Another picture of the phaser, Paramount, and on the back we've got... Press the stun control for flashing light, uh, flashing laser light beam and stun sound. Press the disruption control for laser beam and disruption sound. Power pack grip, stun control, trigger, belt clip at the back, disruption control, access panels, and light up phaser beam emitter. <laughs> and they say this is for ages four and up. And some other products that you can get. The Shorecraft looks pretty cool. And we have a nice little read up on the phaser. So yeah, just pause that if you want to read it. That's pretty cool. I like how it says further access denied, log off. That's pretty cool. So moving on from the packaging, it does come with instructions and the blueprint wrapped up in this nice little plastic uh, uh, bag. That's pretty cool. And you've got this bit of paper here, which I'll show as well. I think we managed to get it out. Bear with me. There we go. Anyway, here are the instructions. They show you how you change the light bulb. That's pretty cool. I like that. It has a light bulb. It's, it's so retro. I like it. It shows you how you turn the light bulb setting off, how to activate it, how to change the batteries, how to clip it onto your belt, etc, etc. So that is pretty cool. So yes, yeah, pause that if you want to have a quick read of it. Just trying to focus in a bit more on it. There you go. So if you pause that, you get your very cool, I think this is. I think the uh, tripod and other things came with this as well. This is very, very nice looking. So if you can hear some noise, the pin men are outside. It's a Starfleet phaser, beam intensity, beam width, power level, emitter crystal, and a nice little read up on it. And a nice kind of x-ray view of it, similar to what the one company did with the 10th Doctor Sonic screwdriver. It says this, I never read this before, this blueprint is a blueprint of the phaser as used in the Star Trek TV show and does not depict the actual function or the internal components of this toy. I think that's pretty much implied, but oh well. That is very cool. I might have to blue tack this and pin it up on the wall. It looks very, very nice. And of course you have this, which is the sticker sheet. And there are no instructions for the stickers. So if you want to find out where you put them, you just simply look at the front. Although there is one sticker, which is this, that says L1. You don't know where that goes, but a guess would be on the button as the guy's thumb is in the way. 
But moving on from that, onto the actual phaser itself. Here it is, it is very nice actually. It is a really good representation of the phaser as well, considering it was made, as this is a children's toy. It's, it's weighty, and it says for four plus. I don't think this is good for four year olds personally, but what are you gonna do? They survived, so, so will I. You've got um, some nice detail on the handle, painted black, and it's sculpted as well as grip, so that's pretty cool. And you have the same detail on the bottom here. You've got the nice kind of curvature going on in it. And I saw somebody comparing this to a proper Roddenberry prop, as they're known as. I'm not sure what the whole deal is with them, but this back section should be a bit slimmer, about that much, but I don't really mind. I kind of like the fact that it's got a bit of fatness to it. Makes it have more bulk and personality almost. Here you have your trigger, stun control, and a disruption control. And to change it from one function to the other, as you can see, it is on st uh, stun control. Let's do that, and it's on disruption. It's on stun, and you activate it, which I will do later. That's pretty cool. They've got this glossy silver tinfoil-like sticker on there. I don't know why. And uh, I just put that sticker on top, so that looks cool. They've cut some holes out here to kind of double as speaker holes, which look nice. Even though the proper speaker there, is here, which is disguised brilliantly as the power level indicator thing. It looks really, really good because um, there's gaps in between each of these, so that's very nice. These are stickers as well on the side. It says 9 to 1, 16 to 8. And I like how it's got a random pattern, like comparing it to the one on the box. It's got yellow, green and blue. I mean, yellow, green and blue? Yellow, green and red. I don't know where that came from, but I like the look of this one more. It looks like the power levels are kind of fluctuating and uh, the phase is constantly changing and with a bit of imagination. Yeah, you've got these which are known as access panels according to the uh, thing. These stickers came pre-applied, although to be honest with you, I wish they didn't because they applied them in a really crappy way, so I might as well have done it. You have a sticker here that says U5. What that means, I don't know. You tell me. Haha. <laughs> um, You've got your uh, phaser emitter part here, which in the show was black, but to give it a gimmick and have it light up, they made this red, which I don't mind. Turning it over, you've got some screw holes. These are to access the light bulb. These are to uh, just open the whole thing up, I suppose. You've got a bit of copyright stuff here, 1992 Paramount Pictures. That's pretty cool. And um, yeah, this is quite strong as well, strong plastic. Probably sort of last if you put it on your belt and everything. So, I like the fact that it has this. When I was at the convention, I just uh, connected this to my pocket as I couldn't be asked to put it on my belt as I'd have to tuck my shirt in and everything so it would show. So, it looked cool in my pocket and I went on the bridge and I sat down and I had this in my pocket. So, I felt kind of special. But yeah, that's just me. You, of course, have your uh, sound effects now, which I will show. This is the disruption mode. No, sorry, the stun control. If you're wondering why half of it is red and half of it is more of a proper light bulb colour, that's because the tip of this is just kind of ever so slightly red, so yeah. This will light up more of a light bulb colour and the main thing here will be more red. So it's a nice little gimmick and uh, I'll just put it closer here so I can hear it better. I don't like the fact that it has like an almost cut off sound at the end. You can hear it's just a k. Yeah, the k. It's kind of irritating, but nothing too major. And of course, your second sound effect. So I'll just get this over with. So essentially, as long as you keep your thumb pressed on it, that's what it does. And it just doesn't make any sense because it doesn't even sound like a phaser. I've heard in some reviews, people say it sounds like a machine gun. It does a little bit and I can't, I'm using my imagination, I can sound a tiny little bit of Star Trek in there, but... Maybe, I think it would have made sense to have this sound effect as a kill sound, so you press this for that, and for this setting, just have this sound, except have it more of a pew, not poo, just pew, so it sounds like it's less effective, so it's just a stun. So I think that would have been cool, but oh well. You of course have your batteries here, which are pretty stupid because this just slides off. Because if you buy this mint, you will have a hard time getting this off. But once you get it off, 
you have a hard time getting it to stay on. So it will just keep on end up falling off. So that's pretty annoying. So if you're right handed, I suppose, and you're playing with this, it's all right because you're holding it like that. But if you're left handed, and this face it does seem like it's designed for left handed people actually, you've got some grip for your palm there and grip for your fingers there. So it seems like it's designed for left handed people, but oh well. But if you're playing with it like this, and oh no. So you're playing with your friends, you've got you, I don't know, Timothy and Roger, I don't know, whoever, whoever your friends are called, and then that falls off and you're like, oh no, I need to stop playing and pick it up now. And it's just pretty annoying. Because I was worried this would fall off while I was walking around. And um, the batteries, um, they really need to, the batteries barely fit in. Honestly, they are so tight. You need to use a actual uh, Phillips head, actually no, this is a flathead, sorry. A flathead screwdriver just to get it off. So, if you're wondering why I'm doing this, it's because I just want to show you. There's a switch there, as you can see, and it's currently set to on. But however, if you turn it to off, and then you uh, put this in, it should make another phaser sound. Should do. Okay, no, it hasn't. And now, if you try it. Sounds a bit louder without the uh, the um, light bulb, but I like the fact that the light bulb comes on with it. So I'd rather have it with the light bulb. And just as a little note thing, if you actually press this button and then you uh, put your battery in, it will make that sound. So that's pretty cool. And I saw this other person on YouTube do this. If you level out the buttons like that and then you press it so I'll just you know, press it and then any button of these you press it will make that sound effect so we'll do the same thing with this as well so oh god that didn't work so that's cool so fair enough oh god this sound is just crap but at least you get this and I don't know, you could use a bit of imagination. Press it once for stun, just press it twice for kill, even though technically you don't even have to press it. And yeah, it's just awesome. I've seen some people modify these by taking off the belt clip, filling this section in with a moldable putty, same with here, here, getting rid of this and having a more accurately shaped one, as the one on the prop didn't have these kind of sections as it gets smaller as it goes along. It was just one stick out piece, but... Eh. Oh, and they replaced this with one of those LED green screens, which looks so cool. However, I like the look of it as a toy, and I'm just saying, if all the stickers and everything were to fall off, as it is a 23-year-old toy, if they were to fall off, although they seem pretty strong at the moment, I think I wouldn't modify it greatly, but I'd disconnect the whole thing, like take it apart, and this button, it has like a little groove, like in the middle where it indents. I'd take this button, sand it down or maybe even turn it over and just have this flat like these so it looks kind of better and then maybe just paint these lines green and just clean everything else up and make it look more like the prop not that i want to do that but if i had to i'd do something like that and maybe paint this black and leave this section more reddish so it still lights up so as a whole this toy is very very cool on a toy level i'd give it a, a seven it's relatively safe, it's got the functions that the actual thing has, and considering the time, it is awesome considering how uh, well it looks like the prop, so as a toy I give it a 7, but as a collector, I'm going to give this a 7.5, doesn't sound like a massive kind of achievement, but I still really, really like this, it's got a very nice design to it, and yeah, it's just awesome. You can get the dolphin style phaser as well, as this is known as the Cobra, Type 2 Cobra. The dolphin which was used in like uh, insurrection and stuff like that if you see it on ebay i wouldn't say get the first contact one as it has the same problem as this one good sound and one really stupid sound but the insurrection one both of the sounds actually sound phaser like so i might try and pick that one up off the internet if i can find it anyway I mean, this is coming off again anyway i hope you enjoyed my review this is a very very cool product and um Actually, before I move on, I just want to say 
if you actually have it on display like this and you think it looks weird mainly because one button's down just flick it upside down like that the button will stay up but with a slight nudge it will go back down again so yeah that's pretty cool and the back's come off again bloody hell anyway i hope you enjoyed my review this is a really really cool product and yeah thanks for watching guys take care